Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We always say your health is everything. You'd have a bazillion dollars. And if you're not in good health, that money's not going to do you good. It's not going to change things, especially if your health takes a turn where it's something that you can't turn back from. We're going to focus on the fundamentals of feeling good and your health. And this is all stuff that you, you may know, you may not know, but we forget about. And she is a certified holistic healthcare practitioner, a Reiki master. She has many, many modalities under her belt, and she can practice those even virtually to help you feel better. But if you're not taking care of yourself with the fundamentals, angle will make a difference. So let's look at those things today with Renee Lennox, who joins us here on the program. How are you doing today? I'm great, Steve. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, um, I'm gratified to have you back here because what we're, we're going to talk about is so important. And in our busy lives of things going on, we let these things go. We just take it for granted. Ah, my body's fine. I'll take care of it. Ah. To a point, yes, your body, it's, our bodies are amazing. However, we have to support them. Where should we start today? What do you think? Exactly. Your life is your medicine. And when I went back to school for natural health, we learned that like in Western medicine, they go by the germ theory that there is like bacteria and viruses that are causing the diseases. And they look at, you know, torpedoing those bacteria with Mm. antibiotics and stuff. Yep. In natural health, we believe in the terrain theory, where you build up your terrain, your microbiome, and then the pathogens aren't going to proliferate. You know, you're going to be able to handle them. And the way to build up your terrain is following the basic foundations of health that I wanted to go over today. Mm. So one of the big ones is, are you drinking enough water? You're supposed to drink half your body weight in fluid ounces. And I know that's hard for a lot of people, especially the type of jobs you have. You don't want to be in the restroom constantly. So it, it gets hard for people. And you want to stay hydrated when you your urine should be a pale straw color if you're hydrated. So if you're checking for that and If you're drinking a lot of coffee and caffeine drinks, every caffeinated drink you have dehydrates. So you need an extra eight ounce glass of water if you're drinking caffeine. What about decaf coffee? Decaf, you're fine with that. Okay. Um, Yeah. I, I, I would drop money on the counter here that the majority of us aren't even coming close to what we should be drinking. Number one, and I want to go back real quick, real quick, if I could, because I was laughing inside about the the germ aspect of our health, and I guess the how did you call it the 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 terrain theory where you build up your terrain. Yeah. So up until five years ago, I would concentrate on germs. Yeah, I wasn't a germaphobe, but friends would joke and call me one. And even working in radio, I would do morning shows and, you know, the team around us, you know, he's, he's cleaning his hands again. And <laughs> I, I, would, I was the Purell person before even COVID, we even knew what that meant. Um, and, and my kids would get in the car when they were little, like, okay, clean your hands. Um, I've since spun that around in the last five years of my journey, specifically even three And now take a look at it at a more holistic view. And I find myself getting sick less. Um, It it definitely reframes things. Not that I, you know, germs aren't on my radar. Uh, I'm walking into a convenience store. Yeah, if I remember, make fun of me if you will. I will use my (laughs) shirt to open the door. You know, I don't want, yeah, I'll wash my hands more frequently, things like that. But I'm not, I don't think about it so much. I think more of the holistic thing minimizing stress and all of which we're, I'm sure we're going to get to all of those here, but right. I just wanted to, it, I, I, it's so funny you should say that because it just, it, I've didn't, I've done the, the 180, the 180 on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, work, that- in, work in progress and the, uh, hold on. I need to hydrate more. Um, <laughs> seltzer water. I, I, I like it just to change it up. I like the bubbles. Is that okay? I, I like seltzer water. I okay. do that. 
and um, it may irritate some people's stomach, the bubbles. I do well with it. Mm. Yeah. For but, the, for but the most that, part. That, okay. Yeah. But I'm fine with people doing seltzer with them. I don't know if, if you'll know the answer, and I don't know if there's an answer for this, but final thought on seltzer. Somebody recently told me, and I can't remember exactly what they said, but it can it can put stress or beat on one organ of your body. I don't know if it's the liver or the kidney or whatever. I don't know if that's founded, but it's stuck in my head. And it was because I drink seltzer. It's great. You know, I'm drinking water. It's got some bubbles, natural flavoring. Um, I'm hydrating. Have you ever heard anything like that? No. Well, I know there's different brands and they say some of the, the packaging like the, that it's in can have more, you know, possibly PFAS and that kind of stuff, but that's everywhere. You know what I mean? And there's a, there's an app Yucca, I believe it's called that you can Ah. in the store, like scan the items and it'll tell you if it's more on the healthy end or not. So I, I do that with the seltzer. I'll try to find one that's more, you know, gotcha. It's considered healthy. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, when it says natural flavoring and it's a, you know, reputable brand, uh, you know, I have to have to trust <laughs> that it's okay. But uh, all right. We digress. Uh, right. Hydration one, key. Right. And one more thing that I want to point out to people with ca- uh, coffee and caffeinated drinks. Sure. Every time you do caffeine, you're stimulating your adrenals and it's putting you into fight or flight. So when people are just drinking coffee all day long, you're really stressing your adrenals. And then the stress of life is a stressing your adrenals. So you really want to watch with that. You can just get in a vicious cycle where wow. you're really, really taxing your adrenals. Wasn't, wasn't aware. Bottom line here, water. Exactly. <laughs> I know it's it, it's either obvious, rhetorical, or boring. Water. Just keep drinking. Just keep drinking. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. And the next thing is food. Are you following what I call the SAD diet, the standard American diet that's filled with chemicals and preservatives and high fructose corn syrup? Or you should be shopping the perimeter of the supermarket with the healthy fruits and vegetables and, Mm. you know, healthy meats, healthy fats. I like my clients to be on an anti-inflammatory diet, like the Mediterranean diet. High fructose corn syrup, every aisle of our supermarket, it's in everything. And our body doesn't know how to break it down. So it stores it as fat. So you really want to watch that on labels. It's, It's in so much. What exactly is it? I mean, we, I, I get sugar from that fructose, but what 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 exactly is it? Yeah, it was like a sugar replacement. That I don't know if it was the eighties that they started that, but ever since, it's you know, I feel like America is a mess <laughs> with yeah. it. You know, yeah. So you definitely want to watch that. Um, the inflammatory foods are wheat, dairy, and sugar, and, and it's conventional dairy has all kinds of hormones and antibiotics from what they're given to the animals. And then we're ingesting that by eating the, the conventional dairy. So you have to watch those th- three things, mm-hmm. wheat, dairy, and sugar. And if you can kick the sugar habit, the list of things that improve on people, just kicking the sugar habit is phenomenal. And is, it, 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 <laughs> would, would you say that sugar is the number one inflammatory? I would say yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, And it takes 21 days to break a habit. So if you can go 21 days, like just kind of keep your sugars like eight grams or less. I know it's hard. Everything you look at in the supermarket, it's really difficult to find things that are eight grams or less, you know, Mm. but just doing that will help so much. Hmm. Uh, This stuff we know sugar is not good for you. Then we, you know, the other part of it comes in. Well, let me just treat myself. You know, I'm just gonna, and, and I guess that's okay occasionally. But if you are repeatedly ingesting these things, and did you remember when you were kids, drink milk. You have to have, you have a glass of milk, and 
now, <laughs> not so much. And it's, uh, it's not so much the milk. It's where the milk is coming from. Right. And, it's our food supply that's right. causing a lot of these issues, mm. you know? Wow. So. Uh, it's, can you answer this? Why, why, when you say the outside perimeter, and I'm thinking back to different grocery stores I go into, there's like two in particular. Yes. One side is the dairy. The other side is the produce, fruits and vegetables. Why do they put them there? Is there a reason? Or- I guess because all the the sad diet, the standard American diet, like processed foods are in the middle because it's all packaging. So they need all that shelving, I guess, to keep all the, all the processed stuff mm. there. And then the, all the fresh things they need, you know, refrigeration and yeah. But you know, which which is interesting, and maybe it's a good thing. My friend is the general manager of uh, BJ's, and he says the biggest money maker is the produce. Okay, I was shocked. So they, I've often heard too that when they put things, you know, extreme to the side, that's the first way you go. You walk in, you go to the right, or you walk in, you go to the left. Maybe they're trying to push us into the produce section. Because it makes them the most money, and 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 it is the I guess the healthiest, the healthiest. You know. But that also gets us into a, another category. Maybe we should go there. Organic, organic produce. Your your thoughts? I mean, of course, organic is the best. But I know, you know, it's also more expensive. Yep. So it gets tough. So I'd rather see somebody if you can't do organic, at least you're doing produce. You know, right? Uh, w- would you say um, not everything has to be organic? I forget what they call it—the dirty dozen, the the dirty whatever. Uh, where they list, say, uh, f- certain fruits that if pesticides can't directly get into it, like a banana, it's got a casing on it, uh, then you don't have to buy the organic version, and and you, you're you're pretty much okay with that. Um, can you tell us anything on that? Um, I never really thought about that, but that's, that's a good point. Yeah. The different fruits that are like encased, you know? Yeah. They call it the dirty, I want to call it the, 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 the clean dozen and the dirty dozen then, and, and the things where you definitely want to buy organic is like strawberries. So you're biting right into it. Maybe an right. avocado. You don't really need to do organic cause you've got the outside shell. Mostly you take what's inside. Um, and again, if you really want to drill into it, uh, you know, that banana, where'd the water come from? Where they watered the plant? <laughs> you know, right, exactly. I don't want to get it's obsessed here, but you know. The- right. Yeah. You don't want to drive yourself crazy because right. then you're down in fear and you don't want to be in fear about your food, you know, because right. then you're low vibration. <laughs> sure. And then what, what happens with fear? Let's, can we go there? Stress. Stress. Right. And we don't want to go there. Mm. It's, that's another category. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, can we talk about it? What can you tell us? Or are you are you doing something for stress relief? You know, are you mis- going for massages, yoga, Reiki, meditation, walking mm. in nature, mm. dancing, playing the guitar? Like just something for you that gives you stress relief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so important. It's so important. Yeah, and I- you have to you know find that thing that resonates with you. And I wanted to mention something for stress relief in like a marriage or relationship that uh, there's something Brene Brown teaches that I thought was so cool. She said like a relationship is never 50, 50, like a successful relationship is when you can pick up your partner's missing percentage of energy, investment, kindness, and patience when they're missing it. So when when her and her husband come home from work, they say, okay, what do you got? And, you know, energy-wise, investment-wise, and her husband will say, "Um, I only have about 25% right now. And she's like, all right, I have you, brother. I'll I'll pick up your other 75% today. We're good. So between the two of them, they can add up to the 100%. 
Then there's another day they come in, you know, rough day at work. You're taking care of sick parents. She only had a 20. Her husband only had a 20. So between the two of you, you can't come up with 100% together. So they sit down and have hmm. a and, and do a kindness plan so that they don't hurt each other. And I thought that was so beautiful. Like if couples could do that and help each other out to make up for that missing energy, it's going to take a lot of the stress out of relationships. Interesting. Um, first off, it, it appears that there's really good, clear communication. So that's a you know, key point right there. I will say that you can't look for somebody to give you those things in a relationship that you can't give yourself right? because that's the, I, I think the kiss of death where if something's missing, so they've got it. So I want it. And you might not even consciously know you're doing it like that movie. Uh, that was it Jerry Maguire. I can't remember where it's like, uh, you complete me. Oh yeah. <laughs> you complete me. It should never be that. It should be, you compliment me. Right. You need to complete yourself. That being said with what you're talking about. Yeah. We're always going like this. So this time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody and you know, we're hanging later and I literally text her. I said, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of low on energy today. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. oh my God, that's so funny. I'm not even kidding. And she goes, why wow, you didn't sleep good last night. I'm like, no, I think I did, but I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Just hanging out. We don't have to do anything. We'll do something on Sunday. And that, that's our plan was a plan anyway. Um, but I, it's almost as I'm doing what you said. Just I'm letting you know. Well, I'm in low today, so you know, <laughs> you know maybe make I need up for you it. to hook a brother up. <laughs> yeah, maybe you know, make up for it. You know, and the plan wasn't anything crazy anyway, because her daughter is home, wants her boyfriend to come over, and so we. But I was just stating facts, so I think I was doing what what you were saying. Um, interesting, interesting. Where if you can get on that um, level of communication, you can give each other what they need at that time, because it's always going to be flip flopping. You know, around there. Uh, each day is going to fluctuate. So yeah. Yeah. if you can come up with these kindness plans, so you're not going to hurt each other when you're at your low, you mm. know. Yeah, it's been a bit, been, been a long week. You know, we had a holiday there. There's lots of, you know, craziness going on last weekend. And then that, but I will say this about stress. Next to hydration in my world, those are the two most important things that we need our radar on. And I lived that life. Uh, stress gave me an ulcer. Stress, and that was like six, seven years ago. Last fall, I was dealing with some stress and uh, had digestion issues come up again. I'm like, what? Is, is the thing back again? Here we go. It got to the point where I, I was almost going to go to the hospital, which I did the first time. And started mitigating the stress. However, want to share that I reached out to a master herbalist and I was taking Nexium and all that stuff over the counter. And it's just like, it, it, it wasn't working anymore. And two days after I got this concoction in the mail in a, in a dropper, it was pretty much gone. The digestion issues. Isn't it amazing? Oh, wow. I, you know, who would think cat's claw, marshmallow root and catnip would be the, the and, and uh, aloe vera juice with pulp. To coat the stomach. I'm, ta the I'm talking two, two days, two and a half days, like night and day difference. So much that I share that with others. I still had that bottle. The per person I was just talking about gave it to her. Hey, you need this now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so herbals do right. make a difference, but the stress thing, it will manifest in so many different health issues in your body and you might not even know it. And you might be, after a while, you become like chronic, uh, chronic stress. You just learn to live with it, live with it. And then, oh, this hurts and that hurts. And then it's the stress doing it, but we don't exactly. realize it. Right? And can I teach you a really quick uh, stress relief energy move that instantly gets you out of fight or flight? I am so listening. It's called, it's Donna Eden's triple warmer smoothie move. And you can do it with me, Steve. You're going to take your, your fingers over your third eye. Mm-hmm. Close your eyes and you're going to take a deep breath in, breathe in four, out four, and then you're going to comb your fingers. You can open your eyes to watch me do this now. Comb your fingers back and around your ears. I have headphones on. <laughs> okay. 
around your ears, and then you're going to come down and land your hands on your heart chakra. And you're going to take your right hand and go around your left ear. So go around that ear and then down that left arm and swipe off that left ring finger. And then take your left hand over the right ear, go around that ear, down that right arm and swipe off that right ring finger. And that instantly takes you out of fight or flight. It tells your body, I'm safe, not being chased by a tiger. I'm just well, best out right now. Wow. So to recap, uh, I have a horrible memory for this stuff. I could never take ballroom dancing lessons. I, I just couldn't. <laughs> um, so it's you, you close your eyes over the third eye with your two hands. You're taking four take deep, deep breaths, breaths in and out. Once that's done, you take your hand. You comb it. Comb it. Oh, comb it. Okay. Comb it or go around your, your ears. ears. Okay. We'll bring your hands, land down on your heart chakra. Then your right hand around your left ear. Right. Go around, down that arm, swipe gotcha. off that ring finger. And then the opposite, down that arm. And you'll be amazed when you, you know, one thought can put us into fight or flight where your body feels like you're being chased by a tiger and it's just a one disturbing thought, but this will instantly tell your body you're safe and it you'll feel it. <clears throat> the one part I'm trying, I just want to make sure I'm going to share this. Um, after that is done, you come back and around your ears, around your ears and, and then, then land on your heart. Chakra. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I've also, I, and I shared this with somebody. I'm in a, a men's group and I shared this two weeks ago. Um, fight or flight when, you know, you just get kind of crazy and, and, and you got a lot going on and our minds, you know, do this, say the, these three things. I am not my thoughts. I am not my emotion. I'm safe in this moment. I love that. And it's almost like a mental reset where it's like, all right, we're good. We're good. You know, just you know, like they're you know, like, like breathing does the right, you know, the four in the four out. It's like a reset button for you. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, wow. I love that. Wow, I love what you. You know, is it the energy? Are you wiping off the stressful potential negative energy when you're doing this around your third eye and then coming around your ears? And because I've seen people um, energetically go like this just to wipe off the the negative energy. Right. You think it's something energy? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely energy. Okay. An energetic move to release it. Wow. Yeah. And you know how when you're stressed out, you just tend to go like this on your forehead. It's like a natural thing mm. to like touch your th forehead when you're stressed out. You know? Super interesting. Wow. Just got to remember it. That's all. Um, I, have, it's, I have a YouTube on it. Really? So when I give everybody the YouTube channel, they can just look up my triple warmer smoothie and I do it. So um, why is it called triple warmer smoothie? I guess you're smoothing over your... <laughs> Yeah, that Donna Eden named it. And it's the triple warmer area where with the stress and adrenals. Wow. Um, we're out of time. So give us that uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> what? How do we find those videos? How do we find uh, Oh, okay. Everything? My YouTube channel is Holistic Groove dash Renee Lennox. And it's spelled R-E-N-E-E -E -E, Lennox, L-E-N-N-O-X-C-H-H-P. That's my YouTube channel. My website is www.holisticgroove.com. My phone number is 215-850-3628. And my email is renee at holisticgroove.com. Wow. Learned a lot today. Uh, a lot of it we're aware of, but we forget about. And I honestly thought, you know, some of this would be just a reminder, but even the, you know, the, the triple warmer smoothie and all of that, you know, some new stuff, uh, and the caffeine, woof, <laughs> evil. Um, <laughs> that's my opinion. Uh, thank you so much for being here today, Renee. Really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? 
Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.